Hey everyone, my name is Emily. If you've been following our channel, you know that Chris and I are currently on a road trip through the western U.S., camping and sleeping in our Honda Pilot micro camper every night. We just finished the Utah section of our road trip, which took us through Utah's Big Five parks. Utah's Big Five are Arches, Canyonlands, Capitol Reef, Bryce, and Zion. Each one of Utah's Big Five parks are absolutely amazing, and each one is worth a visit. I'm going to give you an overview of each park so you know what you can expect from each one of them. I'm also going to put the parks in order for you in order of my personal preference. From very amazing at number five, all the way to absolutely fantastic amazing at number one. As I mentioned, each one of these parks is amazing and these are just my personal points of view on putting them in order from five to one. Here we go. At number five, we have Zion National Park. Zion is the second most visited national park in the U.S. and is absolutely stunning. We entered the park from the east entrance and drove all the way through to the west entrance where the visitor center and all of the major activity hubs are. Part of your drive from the east side to the west side of the park takes you through this tunnel. And if you're an oversized vehicle, you actually have to apply for a special permit to be able to go through the tunnel. You have to pay, at the time of this video, $15. And they will actually stop the traffic tunnel in the opposite direction for you so that your vehicle can go down the center part of the tunnel. And of course, if your truck or your vehicle is too big, you just won't fit through the tunnel at all. But if you can get through the tunnel, it is totally worth it. It's a pretty cool tunnel and it's a little bit longer than you might expect. Zion is also home to some pretty famous hikes, like the hike up to Angel's Landing, which has a chain section, and the hike through the Narrows, which requires special equipment uh, to keep you warm because the Narrows actually takes you through water. To hike up to Angel's Landing, you actually need a permit to cover the chain section of the hike. The hike is about two and a half miles one direction, with the last half mile being the chain section. Now, if you weren't lucky enough to get a permit, you can hike all the way up to the chain section, and then you can actually continue up the west rim, and then you can actually get a really awesome view of Zion anyways. The hike up to Angel's Landing, or if you choose to continue on to the west rim because you didn't get your permit for Angel's Landing, is a pretty strenuous hike. It's about two or two and a half miles, but it is steep and it is uphill. So if you're planning on doing it, I highly recommend you make sure that you have the fitness you need to get up that hill. The Narrows is the other popular hike in Zion. And as I mentioned, you essentially walk through water during this hike. It can be up to 15 kilometers long, though you can obviously turn around before you hit that 15 kilometer mark. Chris and I chose not to do this because I have zero desire to walk through cold water, even if I'm wearing the right equipment for it. So you might be wondering, why did I put Zion at number five? It sounds awesome, and it is. It is totally worth a visit. The reason it's number five is because of what I mentioned at the start of this video. It is the second most popular park in the US. It is busy. We're here during the shoulder season, and wow, the crowds are incredible. We came into the park at 6 a.m. just to avoid the crowds, and there were still a lot of crowds. When we got on the shuttle, we were boarding the shuttle uh, 35 people at a time. Uh, the shuttles take 70 people, 35 in the back car, 35 in the front car. We were about number 60 in line, so we got on the first shuttle out of uh, the Zion Visitor Center right at 7 a.m. Uh, but there were people behind us, people waiting for these shuttles. Uh, there is a lot of people in Zion, and that's why I put it at number five. But if you can get started early, you can probably beat some of the crowds, and it is absolutely amazing. At number four, we have Bryce Canyon. I love Bryce. Bryce is stunning. When you get up to the canyon and you look down, the rock formations are unbelievable. I feel like I see little different things within the rocks. You can obviously see the windows, which are part of the park. You can also see lots of different rock formations. One of my favorite sections is when you're hiking at the bottom of the canyon, you kind of see what looks like a village and then you see what looks to be like a city skyline in the distance. But the whole thing is just made out of these stunning rocks. Bryce has all of these hikes, so you can hike along the rim if you want. Uh, there's a section that allows dogs and is paved between Sunset and Sunrise Point. Uh, there's also other sections of the rim that are a little bit more undulating and they're not paved, but you can still just walk along the rim. It's not too difficult. If you want to challenge yourself a little bit more, you can start hiking down into the canyon. Depending on the section that you start at on the rim will dictate how much you descend and ascend. 
and it is worth going down there if you're willing to do that hike down and up. Chris and I did a couple of hikes down to the canyon. My favorite one was the Peekaboo Loop, which starts at uh, Bryce Point, and then you hike down into the canyon, you do a loop around, and then you hike back up. And the views are spectacular the whole way through. I'm actually not sure why they call it the Peekaboo Loop. The, uh, the views are not Peekaboo at all. You see them the entire time. So why did I put Bryce at number four? I absolutely love it. The reason I put Bryce at number four is just because when you're driving through the park, when you come into the visitor center and you're driving down the main road, you can't actually tell you're in a major national park. There's just kind of pine trees around you. It kind of feels like you could be anywhere. And the only time you actually see the stunning beauty of the park is when you go right up to the rim. But once you're at the rim or hiking down into the rim, wow, it is just spectacular. In the number three position, we have Capitol Reef. Capitol Reef is a beautiful park, kind of off the beaten path. Between Canyonlands and Bryce, if you want to go to Capitol Reef, you kind of have to go through some side roads as opposed to taking the main highway across. Capitol Reef is beautiful. You can drive through the park just to check out some of the amazing scenery, or you can do one of the hikes in the park. Chris and I did the Cassidy Arch hike, and that was amazing. You hike uphill along a ledge, so if you're afraid of heights, this hike is not for you. But if you're not afraid of heights and you like to climb a little on your hikes, this is definitely worth it. Once you get to the top of the Cassidy Arch hike, you are looking at Cassidy Arch. It's one of the few arches we've seen that you could actually walk around and walk on top of the arch. And if there's other nice hikers there, you can even get your picture taken on the arch like Chris and I did. With all of the stunning views at this park and the amazing hikes it has to offer, you might be asking yourself, why isn't this number one? Why is it only at number three? And the answer is just because it's a little bit smaller than some of the other parks, so there's a little bit less to do, and because it is off the beaten path, uh, it takes a little bit more effort to get there. Uh, it's still pretty busy though, and so that's why I've put it at number three. It is still absolutely amazing and totally worth a visit. If you have a chance to go, I highly recommend it. In position number two, we have Canyonlands. Canyonlands is amazing. Everywhere you look, you see these stunning canyons and rock formations. The first time Chris and I did a road trip through Utah, we had visited Canyonlands National Park, and then we started driving out of the park to go to other parts of the states. And we looked at each other, and we saw what was coming up, and we saw the stone rock formations behind us. And we said to each other, we're not ready to leave yet. And so we literally turned the car around and we went back into Canyonlands and we spent another two nights there. The park is just stunning and absolutely worth a visit. So why isn't Canyonlands number one? Well, it's just because my heart is somewhere else. It is in the first park Chris and I ever visited and we absolutely love it. So here we are at our number one pick, which is Arches National Park. This is my absolute favorite park. As I mentioned, all of the other Utah parks are absolutely amazing, but Arches just stands out to me. When you arrive at Arches, after you go through the visitor center, there's a road that goes about 20 miles that takes you all the way through the park. And if you don't want to do any hiking and you just want to stop and you want to see the beautiful Arches, you just can drive to them, take some small walks or hikes, check them out. If you don't even want to walk or hike or you can't walk or hike for whatever reason and you just want to stay in the car or get out of the car and look, you can even do that at a bunch of the arches. There is just so much to see in that park. Arches is also super busy, but there's places you can go to get away from the crowds like the Tower Arch hike that Chris and I did. You just go about eight miles down a dirt road and then you do the hike and we barely saw anybody on that hike. Arches also has two other of my favorite hikes to do, and those are Delicate Arch and Devil's Garden. The Delicate Arch can be done at sunrise or just after sunrise, and then as you go up and you see the arch, you'll see it first kind of in the shadows, and then as the sun starts to rise even more, you start to see the arch take on light, and it is just beautiful up there. Arches is also home to the Devil's Garden hike if you're looking for a bit more of a challenge. That takes you past seven different arches and they are all absolutely stunning. The arches that are further on in the hike are less popular even though they are still quite busy. 
I highly recommend starting any hike in Arches as early as you can. We were starting around 7 a.m. because that's the time of year that we were going at when the sunrise wasn't coming up until about 7.20 or 7.30. But if you're visiting in the summer, try and go even earlier. It is busy, but if you go early, you can enjoy the park before all the crowds. And that's my summary of the big five parks in Utah. In order from amazing to absolutely amazing, once again are Zion, Bryce Canyon, Capitol Reef, Canyonlands, and Arches. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel for more unconventional travel adventures and DIY projects.